Good to be in the house of the Lord. Excited. I'm excited. I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited when I'm not excited. I'm excited. God's so wonderful, and I thank him for his blessings. I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14. St. Luke, chapter 14. Let's stand. Beginning with the 15th verse. If you don't have a Bible with you, we will put it up in lights. And you can follow along with us in the good word of God. And Jesus Christ said, And one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things. He said unto Jesus, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said, or said unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say unto them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, I must needs go see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. And he didn't even ask to be excused. There is no excuse to say no to God. But there are multitudes of excuses to say no to the devil. And I want to talk about those two subjects, saying no to God, which is the wrong move, and saying no to the devil, which is the right move. And we all have an excuse to live for God, and we all have an excuse to not live for the devil. The question I want to ask this morning is, what's your excuse? You may be seated. And as a pastor for 40 years, I've heard just about every excuse that could ever be made. Jesus was preaching. And boy, wouldn't you like to hear him articulate? Wouldn't it have been wonderful to have been there and listen to Jesus articulate what you're going to get to because we're going to meet him in the air. And I'm excited about that fact that we're going to meet him. I read the Bible and many times just Jesus bumps come all over me. You thought I was going to say goose bumps. Well, the goose ain't got nothing to do with the gospel. But it's a wonderful thing when you think about Jesus when he spoke and someone got so excited, they shouted out, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Boy, he was thrilled, wasn't he? What a testimony. And Jesus said, Time to let the air out of that guy. Psst. And Jesus said, yeah, there was a certain man that made a great supper. And he sent his servant out and said to them, go out and bid them to come because all things are now ready. And they all began to make excuses. The first said, I bought a piece of ground. I must needs go see it. I pray they have me excused. The second one said, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray they have me excused. And the third one said, I've married a wife. Well, I have to say that boy lacks some intelligence because you never turn down a big meal, especially if your wife's invited. Right? He said, I married a wife, I can't come. And so Jesus Christ is trying to show us that there are things that are more important than just trying to get along in this life. Amen? You see, one person had something to see, a piece of ground. And that word see doesn't mean that he just needed to go glance at it. It was something that he was going to look at and admire. Captivated it. 
Anybody ever bought something, a new car or a new pickup or a new gun or you ladies new dishes or whatever, a new dress, and, and you just look at it and admire it? Well, that's what this person was doing with the piece of ground. He said, I need to go see it. Something to see. The one says, I got to go prove five yoke of oxen, something to do. See how they work. And the other one said, I married a wife, something to enjoy. So you find something to do, something to see, and something to enjoy. Now, the doing is wonderful. And the seeing is fabulous. And the enjoying life is incredible. But not when you say no to God. There has to be a yes to God in your life. And there is a yes to God in my life. I love every morning coming to the church. I come very early. Sometimes I'm here at three in the morning, sometimes at four in the morning. I come on Sunday morning, three, four o'clock in the morning. I sit up here in the dark and I pray and talk to the Lord. And I pray usually till about eight o'clock. I've been having a really bad back problem a few um, months back and my back was really giving me a hard time and um, I didn't want to go to the chiropractor they work I mean no chiropractors work they do wonderful work wonderful job they do and I've had them work on me I just didn't want them laying hands on me at that moment and I was in a tremendous amount of pain and I prayed God please heal me in my back and I, I just, as I was casually praying, God, please heal me in my back. And I just sensed in my spirit that God heard that. Anybody pray and knew that uh, instantly you knew God's, God heard it. The Bible says we had the petitions that he hears us. I didn't think any more about it. I prayed a while and then I got ready to get up and walk down the steps. It's dark in the auditorium and I've seen the glory of God in this auditorium early in the morning, almost a cloud like a fog. In fact, I saw it so thick one morning in here, I went like this to walk through it. It was tremendous. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, you won't have to worry about it then, will you? And so I got up, I'm gonna walk down and the building was dark and I went to make my step and it was dark and I misstepped. And I misstepped and went pum, 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 down to the, and boy, it just snapped, crackle, pop. My neck got popped, my shoulder got popped. My lower back got popped, my shoulder blades got popped. My rear end got popped. I haven't had a backache since. Now I said to the Lord, why did you put me through this? He said, you're the one that didn't want laying on hands. God's awesome. Come on, can, can I get an amen? God is awesome. See, you can pray, believe, and receive, or you can pray, doubt, and do without. It's your choice. And so you can say no to God, and there's never an excuse. There's never, never an excuse to say no to God. But there are multitudes of excuses to say no to the devil. And so I'm going to put this gear in reverse. And we're going to reverse this story. Jesus Christ said that a certain man made a great supper. He sent his servant out to them that had been bidden, said, come, for all things are now ready. And I want to say to everyone in this room, everything God has to offer is ready. Your forgiveness is ready. Your joy is ready. Your freedom in Christ is ready. Your life in Christ is ready. That blessing of God 
And that anointing of God is already ready. And God says, come. Now, he's not saying come to an organization. He's not saying come to a situation. He's saying come to my son. Because Jesus is the one that made this great supper. And Jesus Christ bought and paid for my eternal life. I said he bought and paid for my eternal life. So let's look real quickly. They, one said, uh, said concerning saying no to God, I bought a piece of ground, I need to go see it. I've got a piece of the world. I've got, I've got a piece of the world. That's what he was saying. That one saying no to God said, I've got a piece of the world. Got a piece of ground, I need to go see it. The second one said, I bought five yoke of oxen. I go to prove them. He said, I've got a busy schedule. I'm too busy for the Lord. I've got a busy schedule. Another one said, I've... Married a wife, therefore I cannot come. And he's basically saying, I've got a life to live. I've got my own life to live, and I just don't have time for God. And let me say quickly, there's a lot of people being swallowed up into the sewage, uh, sewage of that excuse. Too busy for God. I've got a piece of the world. I want to look at it. I want to hold it. I want to enjoy it. I, I've got my life to live. And my answer is no to God. Final answer. But I want to say that Jesus Christ has bought me a piece of ground. Amen. Woo! Jesus Christ bought me a piece of ground. Isn't that good? I've got a piece of heaven. Lost people have a piece of the world. I've got a piece of heaven. Heaven's mine. Jesus Christ has provided it. And I want to say to the devil, no. I am not going the way of the world. No, I am not going to say no to God. I want to say to the devil, no, sir. He don't even deserve a sir. No. Jesus has bought me a piece of ground. And I must go see it. How's that reverse? Hey, devil, the answer's no. Final answer. I put my trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. I put my trust in the effort, the work, the power of God Almighty. Final answer, devil, I'm not going your way. I'm not taking your path. I'm not stepping in your shadows. I'm not gonna live your gloom and doom. I'm gonna live the life of Christ because Jesus Christ bought me with his own blood. And Jesus Christ bought me a piece of heaven. He bought me a mansion and in my father's house a many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, Jesus, Jesus Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there, you may be also. Yes, I want to say no to the devil. My excuse to the devil is Jesus had bought me out of business for the world. He bought me a piece of ground. He bought me a piece of ground where I'll never grow old. Woo. He bought me a piece of ground where no tear will stain that city. He bought me a piece of ground where no graveyards are. He bought me a piece of ground where there's no thistles and no weeds and no, no uh, uh, brush. Uh, he bought me a piece of ground where there's, there's joy unspeakable and full of glory. He bought me a piece of ground where I'll never die, but I'll live forever and ever. He bought me a piece of ground that there's no taxes, there's no personal taxes, there's no property taxes, there's no, there's no headaches and there's no strife. He bought me a piece of ground where I'll never grow old and you and I, if Jesus Christ has redeemed your so you are an eternal everlasting child of God so I say to the devil no 
I will not go the world the way of the world. I will not lay hold of the world. I will not put my trust in stocks and bonds. I will not put my trust in the things of the world. I'm gonna put my trust in Jesus Christ. And let me say it to the devil right now. God's people are better off without you and they're richer without you, devil. And by the way, I wanna say right now, God's children are not poor. Amen. I, I believe that if a man and his wife work hard their life, live for God, I believe if a man is honest in his dealings, he lives for God, he loves God, he works a good job, he prepares, he listens with wisdom, I believe that every man and woman, every family can have their own home, their own car, their own job, and be financially secure because God is not opposed to you having a good life. What he is opposed to is for you being attached to something that is sucking you away from him. My answer is never no to God. My answer is no to the devil. Hello? Come on. So I, I, I turn that around. Instead of saying, I cannot come because I bought a piece of ground and need to go see it, I say to the devil, this is my answer, final answer, no because the Lord has bought me a piece of ground and I will go see it. You see, these people had something to see. I have a land that's fairer than day that I'm going to see. I've got heaven. I said, I've got heaven. Amen? Then we come to the next one. I bought five yoke of oxen. I go to prove them. Well, let's just turn that in around. He said no to God. I'm too busy in schedule. But let's just turn it around. The Lord has bought me a business. The Lord has bought me a job to do. And I go to prove his work. Oh, this is good. This is good. Not because I'm preaching it, but this is good because the Spirit of God is just nailing it. Just nailing it. You see, Jesus bought me, and he bought me to be an ambassador. He bought me to be a minister of reconciliation. If you're a child of God, he bought you into a business, father and son, father and daughter business. And when that one guy says, I've got five yoke of oxen, I go to prove them, I want to say, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has bought me a job, bought me a business, and I'm going out to the world to prove to everyone that God is real and God is incredible and God loves them. That man goes out to prove some dumb animals that says no to God. But I go out to prove God's blessing. I must prove to the people God loves them. Did you know I can take the Bible and prove to people that God loves them? I said, I can take the Bible and prove to people that God loves them. I can take the Bible and prove to them that forgiveness has been purchased for them. I can take the Bible and prove to them that God's a good God not a bad God, and that God cares for their soul. I can take the Bible and prove to them that there's a heaven to go to, uh, go to, go to. there's a, a walls of jasper, streets of gold, there's an incredible son of God. God so loved the world that he gave us, I can prove to the world that God loves them. I can prove to the world that God forgave their sin if they'll only come to Christ and receive forgiveness. I can prove to the world that Jesus Christ is alive, he's well, he's a awesome God. He's an interceding God. He's an answer for the troubled world today. He's our all in all. He's our lily of the valley. He's our our blessed Savior and Redeemer of all. He's the morning star. He's the awesome, incredible God and I can take the Bible and prove to people that they don't have to die and cease to exist. In fact, they will exist one way or another, one place or the other. But praise God, I can take the Bible and prove to them that there is a heaven to go to and that God loves them. You say, well, preacher, what do you mean you can take the, heaven and, uh, take the Bible and prove it? The Bible 
will prove it. Because it's not just the Bible being spoken. It's the life of God in those words. And it's the Spirit of God backing those words. When we speak the Bible, the words have power. Because there is a life of Christ behind those words. Amen. Hello. You see, Jesus has the power. Amen. I got tickled with, I think it was Stetson. He got him a, he was playing like he had a gun. He said, stick him, stick him up. He said, stick him up. I'd raise my hands up and he'd shoot me. I said, Stetson, when I stick my hands up, you're not supposed to shoot. Now let's go this again. He said, stick him up. I go, bang. Now, when the, if that little fella was to pull a real gun on me, listen, I wouldn't be afraid of him because he don't have no power behind him because he's, gonna, he's not going to be able to operate the gun because I'm going to have the bullets out of it. <laughs> Amen? I don't leave loaded guns in the house. The only loaded gun I have in the house is Judy, my wife. She's loaded all the time. I'm teasing her. And when I say loaded, I mean she's an incredible woman. I feel sorry for all you others. I've got a good one. Okay, going to be a fight out in the foyer after a while. But Jesus, his words have power. You know, if you live a good, clean life and you love Jesus Christ and you have a good prayer life, your words have power. And I can take the Bible and go out and share Christ. And it's not just the Bible. It's the Bible soaked in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not just a written book. It's a book that was read to us and spoken to us before the foundations of the world. It's not just a book. It's a, it's a, it's a person, uh, Jesus Christ, coming in the volume of a book. It's not just the words that we speak or a book that we speak. It's the very life of God. What created the worlds, God spoke it into existence. And I want to say right now that we need to go out and prove to people that God is real. And you can't prove to people that God's real if you don't have a good, clean life. Keep your life clean. Keep your nose clean. Keep your life living for God. Keep your life prayed up. Live for God. Take the word of God and and your words will have power. Amen. Come on. This brings me to the last one. The excuse number three. I've married a wife, therefore I cannot come. Well, let's turn that around. The Lord has given me his son. Therefore I cannot come. See, this man that said I've married a wife, he had a life to live, but I have an everlasting life to live. Because Jesus Christ is everlasting life. The writer of John, 1 John says that Jesus Christ is everlasting life. He doesn't just give everlasting life, he is everlasting life. He doesn't just hand us everlasting life, he is everlasting life. In the first service, I said that Jesus Christ, if you, don't, if you don't remember a thing that I've said, remember this, that Jesus Christ is baptism. He is life. And I have, a, I have an eternal life to live. I have an everlasting life to live. And I can't turn my, my answer to the devil is, I cannot chase the world. I will not chase the skirts of the world. I will not turn to the things of the world. My answer to the devil is no. I, God Almighty has given me his son. Therefore, I cannot go after the things of the world. I must be busy about my Lord and Savior. And I must live the life that God has purchased in his blood for me. And devil, that's my final answer. I've always wanted to preach this excuse scriptures backwards. Because when man makes excuses to say no to God, 
There's something much better. There's multitudes of reasons and excuses to say no to the devil. And I want to say to everybody in this room, if the devil's been waiting in on you, if you're stressed out, if you're spaced out, if you're weary and you're tired and you're, you just sinned and grind and you're weary, why don't you, as we give an invitation and an altar call, why don't you say no to the devil? Why don't you just say no and say yes to God? Why don't you in this place right now say, no, I'm not gonna live a life of stress. No, I'm not gonna live a life of worry. No, I'm not gonna live a life of anger. No, I'm not gonna live a life of guilt and shame. No, I'm not going to live a life of discourse, and I'm not going to live a life where I don't have time for God. No, I'm not going to live a life where all I have my eyes set on is worldly things. No, I'm not going to live a life where I want this piece of the world and this piece of the world. No, I'm not, just say no to the devil, I'm not going to live a life, a life that just brings existence. Say no to the devil and say yes to God because God has something much better than this world could ever offer you. God gave his son. And not only did God give his son, but God gave us his life. See, he didn't just die on the cross. He did die on the cross, and he was put in a tomb, and he rose again from the grave. But God didn't just give his life for our sins. God gives us his life for us to live in him for the rest of our lives, for eternity. I'm looking forward to the return of Christ. I really am. And, and in my prayers, and when I pray, I always say in my prayer, now, Lord, you can interrupt these things anytime you want. Lord, I'm asking you for this, and I need this, and I'd love to have this, but I'm okay with you just interrupting at any time. That's kind of like, Lord, if it be thy will. Well, I would much rather his will take us out of here like a rocket right now than to have to face Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday when I worked a secular job. I got turned on to the second coming of Jesus Christ when I first got saved. I really was thrilled about the fact that Jesus would come any moment. I didn't like my job. And we punched one of them time Clocks. Anybody ever done that? Punch a time clock? And every time I'd walk for that time clock, I'd say, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. And I'd stand over that time clock, and I'd just about bring it down to click, and I'd hold it. Come, Jesus. Now, just about click. Come, Jesus. Now, Jesus, I'm going to have to clock in here in a minute. If you don't hurry up, I've got to clock in. And I'd wait till the last minute. And I'd go to work. I mean, no, I wouldn't have been disappointed in the middle of the shift if the Lord would have came. And I wouldn't be disappointed if he came in the middle of this shift if he came, amen? I'm excited about the coming of Jesus. And let me say this real quickly. There's a lot more going on in prophecy right now than anybody in this room realizes. Really, there is. There's things happening right now in the world that's just setting the stage for the return of our Lord. There's things happening overseas. There's things happening to Christians right now. They're being martyred. They're being killed. Christians are being martyred quicker than any group of people on planet Earth right now. News media won't tell you that, but they are. This world's on fire. It means that Jesus is at the door. Jesus is at the door. Listen, if we were out of here today, if we got taken out of here today, I'm going to ask Josh to come on and get a song. If we, were, if we were taken out of here today, it wouldn't take the devil no time to rise up an antichrist. The spirit of antichrist is already here, already on the earth. It was in John's day. It is in our day. The spirit of antichrist is here. If the Lord took us out now, 
Everything the Bible tells will be fulfilled. And it will be escalated. And it will be achieved. Even now, things that we thought were never possible in the 70s are literally possible in the 2000s. Amen? I've been here for 25 years, pastor in this church. And I've seen in the last 25 years, America decay. I've seen morals decay. I've seen things come out of the closet that should have remained there. I've seen hate, and I see hate everywhere. Surely our Lord's coming soon. Surely He's coming soon. I'm ready. I'm ready. Stand with me. God's going to bring a song. I want to invite you to come. Maybe you'd like for us to pray with you. We'd be happy to do that. God cares about you. Say no to the devil. Final answer. Say no to the devil. Final answer.